I'm Kylie Ellis. Um, I'm a Kukata Wurrungu woman from the West Coast. So from birth, um, I was taken from my mum at, at the hospital, uh, placed into what they call a receiving home um, at Woodville, and then three weeks later I was adopted into a non-Aboriginal family. It was too, too raw, too, too hard for her to, you know. And I understand that as a mother now, you know, like I could never give my kids up, you know, like that. But this was the policy back then, that was it. She had to sign a paper to say, look, come back in three weeks. Well, that what didn't happen. You sign a paper, you're signing your children away. She lost all of us. My brother was fostered. My sister was fostered, you know. Do I call myself lucky because I was adopted? No. I was taken from them. I didn't know them. Dad's from Port Augusta, so he had lots of Aboriginal friends. And he, him and my mum couldn't have children at one stage. Uh, and so they said, well, look, why don't you adopt? You know, this was going into the late 60s, why don't you adopt? You know, late 60s, right up to the 70s, they were still taking kids away. Why don't you adopt, you know, an Aboriginal? And they, so they did, my sister and myself. And so um, they had the good intentions, you know. Right up to about 13, this lady used to come up to me all the time during these times and give me hugs and kisses. Then when I met my mum, it was my mum's sister. She was keeping an eye, because as soon as I saw her, and I went, you know what I mean? Like, I had her always around me. Oh wow, <laughs> it just all the pieces came together. I wanted to know how she looked like, um, you know, wh you know who, who she was. You know, I always knew I had a, uh, a, I thought I had a twin sister, but I found out, well, twin as in Gemini's, <laughs> that's, she's a year older than me. I've got a brother who's a year older um, than her, or two years older than me. So like, she virtually had three children straight after each other. For me now, it's going back to country, going back and being with honouring mum. And before I left, when I before I left the uni to go into the job I'm doing now, I just I had a week off and I just went down, went to Cunabur, went to Sejuna, and took my shoes off, went on there and just wanted to be there before I started this new job because I wanted to honour mum. I wanted to say, mum, am I doing the right thing? Like my sister and I told our story. We told that we're taking it, yet, yet we couldn't get any money. We couldn't get the money. But still on the piece of paper, oh, you're still in generation, but you know, we can't give you the money. And it wasn't about the money, it's about how do we honour our mums? It's hard. They always knew they, that I was taken, and I'd tell my story with my kids, and I'd, I'd started doing a bit of because like I said, I do my art and doing painting and stuff. Like mum, mum loved it too. That was one of the things. And I, uh, photographs and t doing photos and taking, going back to country and all that sort of stuff. I keep doing that to make sure that I'm that way of honouring mum. Um, and so then, when I've gone back home with family and stuff, um, you know, it's it's my way, a good way of educating taking my kids back. This is this is in Nana's country. This is your country.
I'm doing narrative therapy as part of my studies and I do art therapy as part of it and that's where I have a women's group, we get together, that's why I love this place here, <laughs> but a women's group and we talk about stories, talk about ourselves while we're doing art. I'm constantly talking about where I'm from and all that sort of stuff. There is that gap though, there's no, there was that disconnection. Um, that I've always had, always will have.